In this video, we are going to go over the basics of acids and bases and um, the properties of acids and bases and how you can look at a formula and know whether it is an acid or a base. So let's go through this. There are basic properties of acids and bases that are pretty common knowledge, but maybe not all of these are common knowledge. So one is that acidic solutions taste sour whereas basic solutions taste bitter. So I think of like lemonade. Lemonade is very acidic, whereas uh, a soap solution is actually basic. Um, with a litmus test, uh, red litmus paper will not change under uh, acidic solutions, but red litmus paper will turn blue under basic uh, solutions. Blue litmus paper turns red under uh, acidic solutions, where blue litmus paper does not change. So a good way to remember this is uh, acidic, as far as litmus paper is concerned, is going to be red, where uh, basic solutions are going to be blue. Um, phenolphthalein is an indicator, and what it is 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 a solution. These both are solutions that change color depending on the pH. So if it is an acidic solution, phenolphthalein will be colorless. If it is not, it will be pink or kind of a purple color. And then methyl orange, another um, indicator solution will be red. I always like to tie it up with the litmus red under acidic solutions and then yellow under basic solutions. And we'll talk more about that when we get to something called titrations. Um, pH, m many people know that the pH is less than seven for an acidic solution. The pH is going to be equal to seven for a neutral solution. And then the pH is greater than seven for a basic solution. The POH is just the opposite. And I'm not going to focus so much on POH here because you can really get yourself confused if you're trying to understand POH because the most common one that we use is pH. And then by definition, uh, an acidic solution is going to donate an H+, plus, where a basic solution is going to accept uh, an H+. Plus. Okay, so let's define acids and bases. We have hydrochloric acid here, HCl. We're reacting it with water, HOH, and in the process we get Cl minus plus hydronium. So if we think about our definitions up here, that acids uh, donate H pluses, where bases accept H pluses, both HCl and HOH water have H's. So I don't know which one's going to be the acid and which one's going to be the base. I have to watch how this red H moves. So this red H gets donated. And because it gets donated to the base, that makes me know that HCl was the acid. And then this base accepts an H+. Plus. Okay, and it's really H plus because it was HOH, it adds an H plus to become H3O, but also with the plus. Okay, so an Arrhenius acid is one that produces hydrogen ions in water, where an Arrhenius base is something that produces hydroxide ions in water, and that'll make more sense later. We always like to think of hydroxide as being a strong base. A Lewis acid, and this is not on the test, not on a quiz, not on a test, is technically uh, an electron pair acceptor, where a Lewis base is an electron pair donor. If you take organic chemistry, you'll learn more about Lewis acids and bases in there. And then the one that we use a lot is a Bronsted-Lowry definition, because Bronsted-Lowry acid is a proton donor, and a Bronsted-Lowry base is a proton acceptor. 
and a proton is, uh, you know, you could say P plus, which we're not really going to do in this unit, but a proton is really an H plus, and here's why. If I have hydrogen as one proton, one neutron, actually zero neutrons in most cases because its average atomic mass is 1.008, and then one electron. If I lose an electron, I become H plus, and that electron goes away and I have one proton. So really H plus is the same thing as a proton. We it is possible for a substance to be called amphoteric or amphiprotic, and that's a substance that can behave as both an acid or a base. Okay, so it can either accept or donate a proton. And then water is a really great example of probably the most common example of an amphoteric substance. This will come back later, but um, if I have something like H3PO4, it's got three H pluses that can be donated, okay? But acids behave in this strange manner that they only donate one hydrogen or one proton at a time. So a monoprotic acid would be something like HCl. It only has one H to give away. Where a polyprotic acid would be something like H2SO4, where H2SO4 breaks apart into H plus and HSO4 minus then HSO4 minus breaks apart into H plus and sulfate. Okay, so it only gives up one H at a time. Now, you may have wondered, what about these double arrows? Well, that means that the reaction is technically an equilibrium reaction, which means that the reaction can go in the forward direction, which is exactly what we're used to but the reaction can also go in the reverse direction. So if the reaction goes in the reverse direction, let's see what's happening to Cl minus. Cl minus ends up gaining an H plus going backwards. And by definition, what gains an H plus, it's gonna be a base, okay? So we'd call this a base going backwards. On the flip side, H3O plus loses an H plus going backwards. Okay, and by definition, if we lose or donate an H plus, we're going to be acid. Okay, so this is going to be an acid. Now, what's kind of confusing, but I hope will make sense, is right now how we have things labeled is not great. Because if you say, look at the acid in this reaction... I might look here, or I might look here, or I might look both places. So it's not helpful. So what we do just to help us understand is that any base or acid on the product side, we're always going to put the word conjugate in front of it. Okay, so always, always, always have the word conjugate if you're on the product side. Now, Here's what's kind of nice, too, about how acids and bases work. If HCl is an acid on one side, Cl- minus is not going to be an acid on the other side. So if something's an acid on one side, it's not going to be the acid on the other side of the reaction. So that is kind of helpful. Okay, so let's practice through some of these. Um, here we want to identify the acid, the base, the conjugate acid, the conjugate base. So HBr, look at HBr and look at what it turns into. HBr turns into Br minus. So ask yourself, does it gain or lose an H plus? Acids lose H plus, bases gain H plus. So because HBr loses H plus to become Br minus, this will be acid. And what's very nice is that once you identify one of them correctly, you have essentially identified them all because we're not going to have two acids on one side. That leaves ammonia, NH3, to be the base. This checks out because NH3 becomes NH4+, plus, meaning it gains NH+. Plus. And then if NH3 was a base on one side, NH4 is going to be an acid on the other side, and we'll call it the conjugate acid. And in chemistry, it's very common to label that Ca, where Br- is Cb. 
Okay, so in two it says, what is the conjugate base of H2S? Well, let's look at what happened with the conjugate base above. We had the acid, and essentially to turn it into the conjugate base, it needs to lose an H+. Plus. So the way we do that is we just make this HS, but it's lost H+, plus, so it was neutral, it's lost a plus, so now it'll be negative. Okay, now let's look, we want the conjugate acid of NO3 minus. So if we look at the conjugate acid, what it was before, oops, I'm wrong. Um, it's going to have an extra H. Okay, so we have this base, we want to turn it in, we have this base, and we want to turn it into the conjugate acid. If we look, it's gained an extra H, but it really gains H+, plus. we'll make this HNO3. Okay, in the following reaction, identify the acid, base, conjugate acid, conjugate base. Here, they all have H's, so we've got to watch how the H's are transferred. H2SO4, does it gain or lose an H when it becomes HSO4 minus? It loses an H, so that would be the definition of acid. So now this is going to be base. This will be conjugate base, and this will be conjugate acid. Okay, now we're going to talk about how to write acid dissociation or ionization reactions. These will be important uh, later on in this unit, but especially in AP Chemistry if you choose to take that class. So we have HCl. HCl is aqueous. All acids are aqueous. And HCl is going to just lose in H+, plus. so it becomes H+, plus. and then whatever is left behind will be there as well. So we get something that looks like this. Acetic acid, and you may wonder why it's written HC2H3O2, is that it can really only lose one H at a time. These three H's actually will never be lost, and we'll get into that later, but we get H+, plus plus C2H3O2 minus 1. Ammonium, NH4 plus 1, will become H plus and then just NH3. It loses an H plus. The anilium ion, we have C6H5NH3 plus. We're always going to remove hydrogens from nitrogen uh, rather than from carbon. So, but it's it's okay if you remove them from carbon here. You're not going to get counted off at this point. We get uh, H plus plus C six H five N H two. Aqueous, 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 and then aqueous. Then we have H2SO4. It has two H's it could lose, but remember, we always lose H's one at a time. Okay, now, what you may see, but, you know, it's not a big deal, is how to write an acid dissociation reaction in water. So it's going to behave exactly the same. We have HCl, but instead of um, it just breaking apart into H plus and Cl minus, we're going to react it with water. And water will behave as a base uh, here with these acids. And we're going to get Cl minus plus H3O plus. And it's a good thing to know H3O plus behaves the same as H plus. So Although it might look different, it's really not going to make much of a difference, except water will be a liquid. So if we have acetic acid HC2H3O2 plus HOH, we're going to get uh, C2H3O2 minus 1 plus H3O plus 1. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is... Um, we have a couple practice pages here. Um, go ahead and do 14 through 19. I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. 
and then go ahead and do 20 through 23 and see how those check out. And then this set of notes will be over. and you can abbreviate acid A and base B. Essentially, acid, it loses H plus, and then it turns into the conjugate base. Base gains H plus and turns into conjugate acid. Okay, so if we want to conjugate base from these acids, if we look at what happens with um, an acid, oops, I wanted the highlighter. This is an acid and it turns into the conjugate base, so it essentially loses an H+. Plus. So we get HSO4 minus 1, we get Br minus 1, we get OH minus 1, and we get PO4 minus 3. 